welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very long overdue review of my Rolex. This is a GMT Master 2, reference number 116710BLNR, but most commonly known throughout the forums and everywhere really is the Batman. Now, this watch I've had for three years and it's no safe queen, so there are lots of marks on it, but I don't just buy watches and stick them in a safe, I do wear them. A little bit of history regarding the this reference, well not so much this reference, but the GMT2 uh, watch in general, obviously it was released in the 60s, but in 2005 it was the first model to receive the new ceramic bezel. But even so, it still wasn't a big seller. It wasn't in the same league, let's say, as a Submariner until 2013 at Basel World, Rolex released this, the Batman variant, the BLNR, and suddenly everyone wanted one. You could get the standard GMT at the time, but you couldn't get hold of this one for love nor money. The big difference, obviously the bezel and the blue GMT hand, that's it. But that's what really set this one apart. And suddenly everyone went mad. I remember seeing one in the shop at the time thinking, oh, I do like that, and I didn't buy it stupidly. So then I put my name down on the list in 2016, the very start of 2016, and I got a phone call middle to end of 2017. So I waited one and a half years to get hold of this one, which was quite lucky, because at the time they were selling for several thousand more than what I paid for one. And then it, when it was discontinued and replaced with a Batgirl in 2018, more on that one later, uh, they doubled in price. So they're still a very well sought after watch. But anyway, let's actually get on with a review. So, actual diameter, 40 mil, which was your standard at the time. Obviously, now they've increased slightly. You've It's quite a slim watch. It's only just over 12 millimetres thick, and it's quite light, just over 145 grams. If you're coming from a Sea Dweller range, so an SD4K or a let's say a Sea Dweller 43 or a Deep Sea, this watch will seem very light on the wrist. And obviously being 12 mil to sit down on the wrist very well. Now, the dial is your typical, lovely, inky, black, glossy dial. And I love the fact that you can, re you can see reflections of the hand as it tracks around the dial. The hour markers, let me zoom in there, the hour markers are your typical white gold, full of a luminous material. The luminous material on this is really, really bright. Uh, it'll give any watch brand a run for its money when it comes to the loom. It really is very, very impressive. Obviously, you've got standard white gold hangs, hands there, but you also have this GMT hand. Now, for those not familiar with how to read a GMT hand, what you do is use the minute hand as normal. So let's face it, it's just coming up to tw uh, sorry, 11 minutes past. And so using that hour hand, you use the GMT hand. So it gives you the time there is 15. So it's 11 minutes past three, three o'clock in the afternoon. I have this set up for Calgary, Alberta, and the normal time there is set up for UK time. So there we go on that. Obviously, then we have the chapter ring with the Rolex Rolex all the way around. As we come past that, we've got the Sapphire Crystal and the Cyclops. The Cyclops is a bone of contention for a lot of people. Many, even in a Rolex fan club, not everyone likes it. I personally like it. I just think that it's it's Rolex. That's you know, what it is, why would you get rid of it? Also, it does a great job. Like, if I do there, you can just see 22 underneath, but the magnification of it two and a half times does a great job of magnifying it. So, not that I'm at the point where I can't read it, but I do know some people who um, struggle. So, there you go. Now, as we come past this, we've got the stunning bezel and this bezel really is great it doesn't do it justice being inside i'll drop some videos in a bit outside and you'll see the way it catches the light it does a really amazing job we've got the 
obviously black and blue and the divide. The divide is flawless. It is very crisp. I believe it starts off like blue and then they go introduce the black on there, I believe. I'm not fully um, into that, but I believe someone once told me it takes 24 hours to make a bezel on this. The bezel rotates, but in 24 hour um, durations. Obviously, it's bi-directional. And the reason why you'd use this is you can advance or, or decrease the time. So if you're going somewhere it's five hours ahead, you can move this five hours and use a bezel like so for telling the time. So in theory, you can, you can set three time zones on this watch. The bezel is just simply stunning. If I do from side profile there, you can see the way the crystal just stands slightly proud of it. Obviously the Cyclops does as well, but the bezel is absolutely amazing on this watch really is good so let's zoom out a little bit come past the bezel there and the case the case all polished on the sides <laughs> extremely marked up but polished brushed polished you can see oh, if i go to the back before i start obviously no markings on the back on the rolex but there you go the crown has got a triple lock system. You can see indicated by those three dots there. So when I screw it out, you should see one of the gaskets. Gaskets, sorry. Now, being that this is a GMT, it's different to set than a normal Samara. So if I pull that out, one click, he says. So, oh, sorry, we went two clicks. We've done it again. So. That's one click. Obviously, the first when you draw it out is to manually unwind the watch. Next, you would think would be to change the date, but no. You can independently move the hour hand forwards or backwards without interfering the flow of the second hand. So if you fly a lot, then basically you can actually... Let me move this away so you can see the date as well. If I move that. Let me wind it through there. So you can actually just change the hour separately. And that's how you change the date on this watch as well. So you actually swing the hour hand around. So I'll do a, a separate video on how to set one of these watches up properly. So that's how you actually do it. You can pull it out and change hour. If you fly, I say, if you fly a lot, this, fun, this function is actually very handy. So wind that back in. So even though you've got the triple lock system on there, the water resistance is only 100 meters. I say only 100 meters, um, but I don't know many people who take their watches past, you know, 30 meters, but anyway, besides the point. So coming out from there, we look at the bracelet. Now the big difference between this and the newer Batgirl is this has the Oyster. And the other difference being the movement. The movement on this one, I think it's a 3168, which was introduced in 2005 with the new GMT Master 2 and then put out of service in 2018, where it's replaced with the newer, I think it's 3285 movement in the back hole, which is actually a far better movement. Not to say there's anything wrong with this, there's no point in even mentioning accuracy because it's plus or minus two seconds a day for five years. So on all my other reviews, I always state how accurate a watch is. With Rolexes, I don't even have to bother. So we know they're spot on. So that's the big differences with the movement, but also you get the Jubilee bracelet on the Batgirl versus the Oyster on the Batman. Now, I personally prefer the Oyster. I just feel that on a tool watch, the Oyster bracelet is the one to go for. Um, nothing wrong at all with a Jubilee bracelet. It's very, very nice bracelet, but not necessarily what I would like on this type of watch. The only bone of contention with this bracelet is the polished center links. The reason why I say that is you would not believe how many scratches you will pick up on this. It picks up every single, every day it appears to be another um, scratch on this bracelet. Uh, once every blue moon, I do polish the center links, maybe once, once a year, something like that. Um, you can use a Cape Cod or something. I know that some people say you'll wear through the metal, but 
I'm sorry, but I'd love to see someone try and wear through the metal on a uh, stainless steel bracelet. Same with the sides. As long as you're not running over the edges, you're never going to touch it. You'll never notice. So anyway, that's the only downside with this. I do know a lot of people who either replace a bracelet with something from an SD4K or a Submariner, or they get the whole bracelet brushed. I've seen a few like that and it does look actually really nice. Now next, the clasp. The clasp is your standard Rolex affair with the fold over safety. All very positive, lovely mechanism on there. But the one thing you don't get on this watch, which you get on the Submariner, is the glide lock. The glide lock is fantastic. But let's face it, this isn't a diver's watch, so you won't really need that. What this comes with, it does have three levels of micro adjustment. Let me just see, let me zoom in on, oh, let me just zoom in on that. Now, yep, you get three levels of micro adjustment, but what you do get is the easy link system. Now, if I put my thumb there, now that's when a bracelet meets the clasp. But if I pull, suddenly you've got five mil more. And what that is, that is all done with a little cap. You have still got the sticker in there. You, if you pull that back, that then will lock on there. Nice solid click. And that retracts it in a fraction. So you get five mil of movement, which is really, really super handy. So if I pull that out again, you get the idea. You can actually do this when the watch is on your wrist, just by placing your thumb behind and then release. So it gives you a little bit more movement. Obviously all screwed, as you'd expect with a Rolex. So when you fold it over, you see I've still got a couple of stickers actually on the watch. Solid. I'll actually place it on my wrist so you get the idea of it. At the minute I'm wearing my Seiko um, MM200. I do love watches at all price points, not just super expensive watches. I like cheaper watches also. Now, my wrist size is a fraction over seven inches. And that's it on the wrist. It's one of these watches which gets a lot of attention when I'm out. If I'm somewhere, every so often you'd, someone will just suddenly say, oh, I love your watch or something like that. It really does get a lot of attention. Um, out of my whole watch collection, I'd say this one, uh, maybe the Kermit, or the Panerai also, because it's quite different. And also at the lower end of the, the um, price scale, Seiko Tuna. They pick up the most compliments when I'm out and about. So that's what it actually looks like on the wrist. It is a stunning watch. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's, I say, it. it's from a distance, straight away, you can tell that's the Batman. It's one of these watches which is instantly recognisable. And I say, you you will get a lot of compliments with it. Or if you're in some uh, dodgier areas of the world, you'll get too much, uh, <laughs> too much attention, so you might want to cover it up. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little review of the uh, Batman. And I will see you at the next review. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. All the best, and most importantly, stay safe out there. Okay then, bye.